Hey everyone, welcome to Psychology with my wife. I'm the wife. And I'm the psychology student. Welcome to episode one. So if this is your first episode with us, I'm going to... Which I think it probably is because this is our first episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you got me there. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go through some experiments, theories, and topics relating to psychology. And I'm going to try to put them into simpler terms so it's easily digestible. Yeah, and I get the really fun job of just sitting here listening to Julian describe all of these really interesting topics. And I'm going to ask questions that will help myself and hopefully some of our listeners to understand these topics a little bit better. Yes, but that is if we aren't too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Because it seems like we're both incredibly nervous to do this first episode. Not sure why. Yeah, what? This is not weird having multiple ring lights and cameras on us. Totally normal. It's like an audience, but it's like an audience of, I don't know, like robots or something. <laughs> it's an audience that doesn't laugh back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so every joke does not hit. <laughs> every joke's just a fail. Dead silence, because we don't laugh at each other either. Wow, I'm pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> you definitely laugh at me. <laughs> anyway, the other problem we had when we were starting to like practice filming and stuff is there was this buzz in our apartment, mm -hmm. and we had our headset on, and we were listening to our recordings, and there was this buzz in the back of the recording. It was trash absolute trash <laughs> hey you didn't even notice it until i pointed it out i had no idea never would have noticed it thought we sounded amazing and then julian pointed out this buzzing to me and then even without our headphones on i could hear this buzzing in our condo and holy smokes it drove us crazy yeah we literally went through everything unplugged everything turns out it was the fridge <laughs> yeah so Fun fact for all of you to know, while we're recording, our fridge is always going to be off. <laughs> yes. So one more thing we have to clarify before we start this podcast. Gianna is not my wife yet. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the big deception. <laughs> <laughs> she will be soon, though, but makes more sense than psychology with my fiance and then rebranding. Yes. So I am recovering from being very sick and I have a cough and a sore throat that unfortunately has not gone away. We tried to put off filming the podcast because we know my voice kind of sounds trash right now, but it just it's been over a month. And so we we're like, hey, we just want to get started and get going on this. So I apologize that I sound not my best. Not that I ever sound much better than this, but I promise you this is not as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This semester will be the first time I will have in-person classes in the last two years of, well, last and the first two years of my degree. So fingers crossed that you do get to go in person. Yeah, and it'll honestly be the first time I've taken transit, like on a train or something in the city. Yeah, Julian is not a big city boy normally, and so this is going to be a new experience for him having to take the underground train and a city bus to get to his campus. We're going to go try tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to go on it together and see how it goes. Go on an adventure. <laughs> but anyway, let's get this started. <laughs> Okay, today's podcast, we're going over the marshmallow test, how it came to be and what it shows us. Mm. Oh, dang. <laughs> because I've been sick, I forgot I wanted to do this. But when Julian told me our first episode was going to be on the marshmallow experiment, I wanted to have marshmallows. But I forgot. <laughs> Starting off strong. <laughs> 
that's going to affect the ratings. It is. Everyone's going to just be like one star and no marshmallows. This is (laughs) terrible. (laughs) That's all the reviews. 1.5. Wish it had marshmallows. (laughs) I came to watch some marshmallow eating. What is this? I thought this was a mukbang. (laughs) A marshmallow mukbang. A mukbang. (laughs) Have you ever seen that? No. It's like... On YouTube, people film themselves eating large amounts of food. Oh. (laughs) Speaking of it, plug to our YouTube channel where you can watch our podcast. If you're listening to it, it's available on every single possible platform. But if you want to be able to see what's going on here, go to YouTube and you can watch us. (laughs) The awkward little humans sitting on a couch together. Hey, it happens. (laughs) Okay, so this experiment, the marshmallow test, looks at delayed gratification. And for those of you that don't know, delayed gratification is resisting immediate rewards to attain a more valuable reward in the future. Um... There's, you can also call it self-regulation, self-control. Delayed gratification places more value on the larger delayed reward instead of the smaller immediate reward. So there's also the opposite of delayed gratification and it's not instant gratification. It's called delayed gratification. Or, <laughs> 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 Delay discounting. Oh, I hate that. so the one is delayed gratification and then the opposite is delayed discounting yes i really hate that it should be the opposite right well i'm not even going to argue one way or the other on that but they shouldn't both be delayed like who came up with that no clue i don't don't know immediate gratification instant gratification like that's what makes sense to me for sure Yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. (laughs) But that's obviously delayed discounting is a preference to smaller immediate rewards compared to the larger ones. And what are they delaying then? Like if they're getting them immediately, I don't understand the You're discounting the delay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like it's a smaller delay. (laughs) Could it could be like Decreased delay? I don't know. Delay decreasing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the opposite. I was thinking of a word for gratification, the opposite of it, but it's it's probably discounting. Okay, we'll just go with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess delayed gratification would be like studying for an exam rather than going out and partying or <laughs> maybe even... Um, eating your vegetables before you eat your dessert. That would be delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. Well, delayed gratification is pretty easy. It's basically like if I make a whole bunch of chocolate chip cookies, Julian resists eating them. Yeah, that won't happen. <laughs> is Julian exposing himself on camera for having no self-control? None. No delayed of gratification here gratification cannot be delayed this is a delay free zone (laughs) gratification overhaul yeah (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) i i mentioned the the exam example is like studying rather than going out with friends or whatever Mm -hmm. or partying So delayed discounting would kind of be like studying a little bit for the exam and then maybe going out for a short amount of time or like doing something you enjoy for an hour Hmm. and then going back. I think that's what it means. That sounds really healthy. Well, your focus would be better, honestly. I know I'm not kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Genuinely, that sounds like really healthy behavior. (laughs) It only applies in some... I'm jealous. (laughs) It only applies in some cases, though, because, like, for example, the dessert thing. I don't know if you could have a little bit of supper and then a little <laughs> bit of dessert and then have some supper again. I could get into that. Depends on the dessert, I guess. 
Mm. Last night, for the first time ever, Julian had Japanese cheesecake. I would definitely recommend it. He's so a fan. <laughs> yeah. I've already made my decision that Japanese cheesecake, way better than other cheesecake. That's all I'm going to have from now on. <laughs> and I don't like cheesecake, so it doesn't bother me. Did you like the Japanese cake, though? Mm. I could delay my gratification there. <laughs> I would definitely be delayed discounting on that cake. (laughs) This whole, I'm sorry, this whole podcast, guys, is just going to be me and Julian making terrible jokes to each other the entire time. I think these first couple episodes, though, are just going to be us randomly (laughs) going on tangents. (laughs) Yeah, stick around with us. I'm sure we'll get better at some point. But trust me when I say, like, we feel so awkward right now. (laughs) But we're trying to push through it because we just, we really thought this would be fun to do together. And so we're like, we just got to get an episode out. (laughs) Got to do it. One. Just do it. One episode. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Okay. Hot seat. If there are two people that are both studying for an exam, the first did not take any breaks or did anything fun until they completed their studying. And the second person was using the delayed discounting technique. So they would study for a short period, do something fun. Who's more successful in life or who's going to be? I'd say the person who is able to delay gratification completely. Because as much as I said earlier that having the delayed discounting seems kind of like a good habit to have. And I think there are circumstances in which that can be beneficial. But thinking about your character as a whole, I think if it's almost showing not really self-control to be able to do like a little work, a little fun, a little work, a little fun, because it's almost showing that you're not able to force yourself to work for a long period. Like you have to constantly have some form of gratification to keep you motivated. Whereas someone who's able to completely delay gratification until they're done shows a much higher level of self-control and ability to like persevere and work through challenges. Okay. That was a lot more of a thoughtful explanation than I was looking for, but we will definitely take it. You put me on the hot seat. That's (laughs) what you're going to (laughs) get. Um, the other question I had is, do you think compared to our parents and their generation, our generation is, Uh, has more trouble delaying gratification. A hundred percent. A hundred million percent. Absolutely. Growing up with so much technology around us, even though we're not from Gen Z, which only grew up with technology, but still, we just had such easy and quick access to things that it makes sense that it's more difficult for us to be able to delay gratification because we've never lived through circumstances in which things weren't easily accessible. Although I will add a comment there to say that we are in somewhat privileged positions where oftentimes things for us, while they were maybe like easy necessarily, we always had what we needed. And so there are certainly people within our generation who might not have had the same experiences as you, as you and I. So speaking for us, I think we're definitely different than our parents' generation, but speaking as a whole, I think there's um, different answers for different people. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, when you have like poor service in your web browser, like any page doesn't load. (laughs) Do you remember, like, I don't know about you, but like when I had my like first iPhone in like grade nine, so that would have been like 2013, 2012. The internet was so slow. That was like when they first had 3G. I don't think I would be able to handle it now. No, honestly, I don't really remember when I had my first phone, but my grandparents gave us our first computer when I don't even know how old I was, maybe five or something. It was like a dial-up computer. Mm. Love you, Grandma and Grandpa. That was such a great gift. Had so much fun playing games on there. But holy smokes, yeah. The amount of time and patience that we exhibited during that period, you know, to still be able to use what we wanted. 
imagine if you gave that to a kid now who was already used to using like high speed everything. Maybe that's what we have to do. Because we'll be, <laughs> you know how like kids just grab phones and they're just like, mm, phone. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll give them an old phone. <laughs> it just doesn't work good. <laughs> we'll show them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So the marshmallow experiment, the whole purpose was to figure out how delayed gratification develops in children. So their hypothesis was that if a reward was directly in front of a child, they would be reminded why they were waiting and in turn leads to a longer delay of gratification. Okay, that makes no sense. Yeah, it's I, it, straight up, it's completely backwards. <laughs> yeah, like that's like suggesting that if we had a bowl of chips sitting on this table in front of us and we were like, Okay, pal, we can enjoy the chips after we fin finish filming. But then we're just like staring at the chips the whole time. I just don't, I don't buy that. Like that would be hard. If we kept them in the cupboard, I think I would be like, oh, out of sight, out of mind. It would be easy. But they're just sitting right there. You know, your girl would want to go for some crunch. <laughs> hey, you know what? Actually, I think I agree with the guy. I think he's right. It'll be way harder if it's right in front of me to eat the chips. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> okay, we're just going to take a quick pause while you go grab some chips. <laughs> oh, I've got the chips. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that only makes sense for people <laughs> that are only listening to the audio. I think it'll be funny for people who are watching us. <laughs> They'll know we're little scammers who didn't get chips. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <but> like, <laughs> like you said before, if you cook or bake some cookies, cook some cookies. Cook them up. <laughs> and you have them sitting out on the counter and the smells wafting around the apartment. You expect me to like delay my gratification and having all of them? No, you don't even delay your gratification enough to let me cook them. <laughs> Give me that cookie dough. <laughs> All of it. Uh. <laughs> so there's actually two parts to this experiment. The official one's called the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment, but it was based off the findings of a study they did before. It was by the same people. Um... Walter, I'm going to butcher this, Michel and Ebby B. Ebison. <laughs> Ebby B. Ebison? Ebby B. Ebison. That's a brutal name. Yeah, I'm just like Smart pfft. fella, I'm sure, but brutal name. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If you look at his name, there is E, B, S, and N. So there's four letters. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like 20 letters. <laughs> weird but anyway the experiment is they set up a room and there was a table with two chairs and they would go into the room they would sit the child at the table and they the they would place a pretzel on the table and <laughs> they would leave the room okay a pretzel i'm sorry i'm confused I thought we were talking about marshmallows. Yes. Well, apparently they thought kids loved marshmallows in the first, or oh, sorry, pretzels in the first one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If I'm like picturing myself as a kid, I don't know if I'd be like going wild for some pretzels. No, I don't think so. Like maybe a soft pretzel covered in chocolate mm -hmm. and like melted marshmallows and deliciousness on it. I might dabble. But uh, a crunchy pretzel? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Hershey's and cream pretzel. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's another tangent. Let's do it. So the researcher, what they did is the researcher told the child that if they ate the pretzel, they would come back in the room. And they kind of repeated this a couple times. When they ate the pretzel, they would come back in and be like, oh, you do it again. And 
the whole purpose is what I think is that they were trying to associate the researcher with coming back to receiving a treat. So this is like preparing them for the rest of the experiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can kind of understand that logic there. And this, it happens in a lot of like classical conditioning experiments Mm -hmm. where they have a prerequisite to what they're actually testing is they train, they condition you to have a certain trait or habit. Yeah, this is like in the office when Jim trains Dwight to expect a a mint or something. Is it a mint? I can't remember. I thought you were going to talk about the phone and he adds a penny, but that's not the same thing. No, that's not the same thing, babe. Someone comment if anyone is actually listening to this. (laughs) Please comment and let us know what is it that Jim trains Dwight to do. I think... It's like every time he makes uh, rings a bell or something, Dwight puts his hand out for a mint. And then he starts realizing like when Jim doesn't give him a mint, he's like, hmm, for some reason, like I'm salivating or something. Oh, we're definitely going to have to watch this episode. Yeah. I can't believe I don't remember it. See, The Office is an intellectual show. (laughs) You can't even say that straight. <laughs> um, oh my god, I can't remember anything. What's the Michael? Yeah. He's yeah. that's what makes the show intellectual. Oh yeah, Michael Scott. Yes. He's got so much wise words. <laughs> the wisest. <laughs> okay. So after they did this pretzel stuff, mm-hmm. they brought in two rewards a pretzel and a cookie. Now we're talking. Yeah. Cookie makes sense. So the kid got to choose which one they wanted more. And once the kid chose, they would explain to them that the child could wait till the experimenter returned for a more preferred treat. Or they could bring the researcher back in by eating the less desired one. So whatever one they did. Do you have the data on how many kids chose the cookie over the pretzel? Probably more than... The other ones. We're just going to guess. Okay. I agree with that guess. I didn't look much into the actual results from this experiment because it leads to the the actual experiment that shows things. But they care, compared the kids' reactions by leaving none, one, or both the treats. So comparing whether if it's sitting in front of them, <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> and... The results show the exact opposite of what they predicted. Having the rewards directly in front of them decreased the delay of gratification. And by not having the reward in front of them, they are able to delay gratification rather than focusing on the reward. Mm-hmm. So I was right. Exactly. You're so smart. You should be a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. But thanks. <laughs> Okay, so now the actual marshmallow experiment. With marshmallows. Well, we'll find out. Okay. So a couple years later, um, I'm assuming they're different kids, but they were looking to prove that an activity that distracts a participant from the reward will increase the delayed gratification. It's kind of what they found. They uh, found that when... None of the rewards were in front of the kid. It was more effective at allowing them to delay gratification. Mm -hmm. Um, They hypothesized that a couple things would affect it. Simple activities, internal dialogue, and fantasies. So, I guess talking, I don't know what the difference, a fantasy. Versus internal dialogue? Yeah. Well, an internal dialogue, I assume, is you actually like having a conversation with yourself, trying to convince yourself that you don't need it. Whereas a fantasy, I assume, is kind of just like daydreaming. Yeah, probably. Or like fantasizing about a big marshmallow. Or something like that. <laughs> so um, this one was set up into three, three parts. The first 
was similar to the original experiment and that one group had the option to receive a preferred treat if they waited. But in this um, part of the experiment, they added more conditions. So they did a treats versus no treats condition and a distraction versus no entertainment decision. So there's that one. The second experiment tested whether or not thinking of fun things affected the grat gratification. So they had half of them. They told half to think of fun things. The mm -hmm. other half, they didn't do anything. Third experiment obscured the rewards from view with the same as the second experiment. But the groups were told to think of treats, fun things, or no task at all. So. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, actually you, you can watch the, they watch the children try not to eat the treat, obviously. And there's videos of it. Um, <laughs> some of them talked to themselves or sang to themselves and one of them put themselves to sleep. <laughs> That's a whole mood. <laughs> I can just imagine them watching me like, oh my God, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to fall asleep. <laughs> So I'll put the video links um, from the experiments in the bio and you guys can check it out because it's kind of funny watching kids struggle to not eat. <laughs> I want to see these too. It's probably just like watching Julian. <laughs> That's actually true. So many times if I'm cooking supper and you're really hungry, you end up just falling asleep on the couch. So this, <laughs> this is like a real thing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that was me <laughs> real life meme <laughs> um so obviously the results from the experiment they found that shifting away tension from the treats occupying themselves with toys and really believing that they were getting their favorite treat after delayed their gratification and that's what they said was the, the fantasizing Okay, makes sense. But they had to really believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe I'll get my treat. I do believe I'll get my treat. <laughs> um, <laughs> they followed up um, with those kids 10 years later. Mm -hmm. And this is where it gets interesting. Okay. They found that the kids were able to delay, the kids who were able to delay gratification had higher SAT scores. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're right on the delayed gratification thing. There I asked you at the start. Oh. I like it. <laughs> so we have the advantage here. We're going to be able to teach our kids to delayed gratification. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'll have to get my cookie, my cookie uh, monster under control here. <laughs> Don't pass that on. <laughs> We actually need to do an experiment next time we're home visiting our families. I have, we have a few nieces and nephews mm. and I've seen people online do essentially the marshmallow experiment with their kids where they put like a bowl of candy or something in front of them and they're recording them and they're like, you can't eat any until I come back, but I'll be back soon. And when I get back, you can eat, you know, however many. So we definitely need to do that with my nieces and nephews and see if we can get them to resist, have some self-control, delay gratification. Okay. I could see, uh, wh what's your bet? Hank and Eli, what do you think each one would do? Mm, Hank? Hmm, I don't know. I don't want to be biased here, but I'm just, I think Eli... This is what I think Eli will do. <laughs> he will grab the marshmallow and give it to you. <laughs> I think that's what he'll do. He won't understand the experiment. <laughs> He's too young. That's true. Eli loves to just like feed people food. It's so cute. <laughs> I think Hank would understand. I'm pretty sure he'd be able to resist. You think? Yeah. Okay. And then the little girls, they're too little. <laughs> They'll just eat little. it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, we're going to have to try it out. We'll see. So, also, they're, they've done similar studies. Um, they did, do you know what a cuttlefish is? 
Yes, definitely. I could draw it for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You would probably draw draw a squid <laughs> type of animal, right? I don't know if you'd be able to tell what it is. <laughs> of <laughs> your picture? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't be that bad. But anyway, they did uh, a delayed gratification test with cuttlefish. Mm-hmm. So I guess they have some intelligence. What they did was... They trained the cuttlefish using clear boxes with food inside them. And what they used for this was live shrimp, dead shrimp, and crabs. And those are in the order that they preferred. Mm -hmm. So they had one box that opened immediately, one on a delay, and one that didn't open at all. They put the dead shrimp in the box that immediately opened and the live shrimp in the one that opened after a delay. And they ended up waiting for the live shrimp. Okay. Some smart cuttlefish. Yeah. Because, like, I think the thought is that a lot of animal, animals... Animals. And an animal do not understand. Like, they don't have the concept of delayed gratification, mm-hmm. right? They're like, I see food, I eat it. So... What other animals do you Wait, think? Wait, I thought you said they waited for the live fish, so they did delay gratification. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying that proved that animals can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like most animals. I bet you if you did that with a dog, they would just eat it. <laughs> Some dogs, maybe. I don't know. Dogs are smart. I don't know. Actually, that reminds me. There was this... I seen a video of a vegetarian saying that their dog was also vegetarian. And they're like, I'll show you. So they had a pile of like lettuce beside a pile of meat <laughs> and they're like i'll s- show you right now my dog is- will choose the vegetables the dog comes in and just eats all the meat instantly <laughs> and she's like no you're not supposed to do that you're oh, vegetarian i read this reddit story the other day and it was about this lady who was a vegan and she wanted her cat to be a vegan also and so she was only feeding it veggies and the cat got really, really sick, like almost died, went to the vet. The vet got super mad at her and told her that she needed to start feeding the cat proper Rightfully food. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. She still didn't. And so then the cat just kept getting like worse and then her friends had an intervention with her. And so then she apparently had a you know realization that... By trying to not do harm to animals, she was harming an animal. And so it wasn't really paying off. Hmm. Was she vegan after? Yeah. She, she stayed vegan. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Cat not. The cat was no longer vegan. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Speaking of it, I don't know if any of our listeners like Reddit, but we're definitely going to do some Reddit episodes, which are going to be ones where... I will take charge and I'll do the research and find some really hilarious Reddit stories and then I'll read them out to Julian to get his kind of psychological perspective on what's going on in these stories. Yeah. So look forward to that. Stay tuned. (laughs) Okay. What animals, so the cuttlefish can pass the marshmallow test. What other animals do you think can? I'll uh, give me an option. Yes. What I'll do is I'll read a couple. They haven't done, like, it's not like they've tested every animal Mm -hmm. out there to see if they did, but um, I found a few. Um, Side note, I was looking if dolphins can pass the (laughs) marshmallow test and Google, like, the autofill thing turned into, can dolphins breathe underwater? (laughs) (laughs) No. They can't. No. They have to come up for air. (laughs) Yeah. But they're a fish. So I was like, oh, this is stupid. Dumb. What kind (laughs) of a question is this? Uh, Yeah. I think I remember that. I feel like you told me that when you were making this episode. I think you asked me, like, can dolphins breathe underwater? (laughs) That baffles me. (laughs) Who would have known? Now, all of our (laughs) 1.5 listeners know. Who's the half a listener? <laughs> Someone who's like listening to it, but not really listening. Just playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
monkeys. <clears throat> yes. Mm-hmm. Why? Because monkeys are one of the most intelli- intelligent species out there besides humans. So I would like to believe that they would be able to delay gratification. You are correct. Nice. Okay. Cats. Ooh, cats are very conniving, smart little buggers. So my instinct wants to say that a cat would be able to delay gratification. But I think it depends on if they if they knew something else was coming. So I feel like monkeys might be able to understand the concept that something better would come if they waited. But I'm not sure if cats would be able to understand the idea that if they waited, something better would still come. So I don't think cats would be able to. There actually isn't a study on it, but I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. But. <laughs> okay, well, comment below somewhere, <laughs> anyone who's listening, and let me know if you think you agree with my reasoning for cats or if you or, have a different thought. Yeah, or test it on your own cat. See yeah. If they can delay gratification. We don't have a cat, but if someone has a cat... Please, in a nice way, do this. Okay. Dogs. Dogs. I would say yes, a dog would be able to. Yes, they can. They're very trainable. Nice. What about birds? See, now that's really vague because there's so many different types of birds. Can you be more specific? <laughs> huh. No, because that'll give it away. Well, then I'm going to say yes, because I'm guessing they tried this with a smart bird. Yeah, they did (laughs) try with smart birds. But there's a lot of smart birds. Most birds are smart. Most, but then you have pigeons. Well, pigeons are, I think, still pretty smart. Are they? I don't know. Okay, I'm very sorry, pigeons. I meant no disrespect. (laughs) (laughs) They're on our balcony all the time. I'm so sorry. Let's be friends. <laughs> um, yeah, because sterlings, I didn't know that. Sterlings can like mimic human voices. Oh, yeah. You showed me that creep. Was that what it was? That yeah, that was a sterling. The day? Oh. Yeah, and it was like super creepy because it actually sounded like a robotic human. Yeah, we'll put a link to that sterling video in the bio if we can find it because that was really crazy. <laughs> okay, back to humans. Tyler Watts, Greg Duncan, and oof, Honan Kwan. I think that's his name. Sorry if I butchered it, whoever that is. They're Did not I'm- listening. That's okay. <laughs> 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 I hope they would be. <laughs> oh, well, they did a much more in-depth study. They used 900 children. Wow. Um, compared to there was 90 kids in the original experiment. So that alone kind of gives it more credibility. But. Okay. As a qualitative researcher, I despise (laughs) that you just suggested (laughs) you need a larger sample size to have any kind of credibility or legitimacy for your work. Not true. (laughs) Okay. But if you had the same experiment with, although it would still be credible, 900 compared to 90 kids would be better, would it not? Not necessarily. Doing 900 kids, the amount of funding and manpower and time that would go into this, when I'm just taking a wild guess here, I'm assuming the results probably aren't really different than the 90 steady one. But I'm open to (laughs) having my mind blown. (laughs) (laughs) So, actually... The results are the same. Mm -mm, They're different. (laughs) (laughs) So their team, like Watson, his team did not believe that just because a child was better at delayed gratification, that it improved their SCT scores. Okay. So here is part of why there was 900 kids. (laughs) They compared people children from different environments. Mm. So they looked at ethnicity. They looked at 
um, income, family income, and also education. So what they found is when the mother had a college degree, those who waited for the second marshmallow compared to the ones that ate the first one did better on the test scores. Mm -hmm. But here's where it gets weird and I don't get this. If the mother did not have a college degree, it didn't matter if the kid waited or not. Hmm. But So my immediate instinct here is telling me that basically the difference between this test and the other or the study and the other study is really about like homogeneity. So if you did a test with a homogenous group of kids you're likely going to find that delayed gratification has an impact. But when you spread it out over, you know, multiple different groups of people from very different circumstances, there's going to be other factors in play that would impact it more. But if you did groups that were all singled and homogenous, delayed Mm -hmm. gratification, I'm assuming in my perspective, would still have an impact. Yes. Yes. I would say so. Does Watson say so? Well, partially. (laughs) Partially. So they also did the household income. The number of, and they based, uh, they also looked into the household income, the number of books in the household, and how responsive the mothers were to the children. Mm -hmm. All these are very plausible reasons why someone will be successful. What they found The lower the family income, the lower the delay of gratification the kids could do. And makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, it's basically like the scarcity principle, right? If you're coming from an environment where you might not have such easy access to things, it makes sense that when you do have access to it, you're just going to want to have it right then because you don't know if it's still going to be there afterwards, right? Yes, definitely. And it's also... um, kind of like your life isn't as enjoyable or maybe it's more stressful so those little things mean a lot more to you Mm -hmm. like the not instant gratification but more like things that give you gratification because you don't enjoy your life as much as you could yeah you know what i mean yeah i could see that or at least there's a higher chance Mm -hmm. if there's lower income but definitely that kind of brings into the thought of rich and poor people think differently. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe like rich kids, like you said, the opposite of scarcity, they always believe that they're going to get it. And that's not in the back of their mind that if they don't need it now. They can do. Yeah. Some rich kid in the study, they're probably just like, ah, we have marshmallows at home. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) probably not to generalize rich kids either but you know so actually the number of books in the household also made a difference um more often than not the kids that had a lot of books and they were reading a lot did more successful on the sat scores and it wasn't delayed gratification it didn't matter um And how responsive the mothers were to children was a major factor. Mm -hmm. So there's also, there was another study by Brie L. Perry and Jessica McRory (laughs) Calarco. They had a study showing that children raised in low income environments ended up splurging on payday when they had jobs. And this is even when they knew they didn't have money. So that's kind of what I was saying is that short-term instant gratification is needed to like make life bearable mm-hmm, of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the idea of, well, I'll just have a really great time now and then I'll just figure it out later kind of thought yeah. process. Or maybe it's just like delayed. I think the scarcity complex could almost be delayed delayed discounting. Maybe. 
You know what I mean? Because like you're not thinking big picture because you cannot think big picture. You have to think about the things that you can do short term. Like your goals are oriented towards short term things. Like making sure you have enough food on the table or the month, the money at the end of the month to pay all the bills. It's not thinking about, oh, let's save this much for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And also what they found in this study is that parents were more likely to succumb to their children's request compared to the rich parents. And I think this would be kind of like them passing on their own feelings of like wanting, not wanting to delay gratification. So, well, it's probably, I'm just making an assumption here, but this idea where, yeah, once they have a payday or something, they really do want to just be able to spoil their kids a little bit and get to see like that extra amount of joy by, you know, giving them something that they don't normally have access to. Yeah, and well, and then the other part is that they wouldn't want their kids to feel like they felt. Mm-hmm. About being stressed about that so they can get stuff they want. Yeah. But in adulthood, what does delayed gratification look like? Like, how does it benefit you? There have been a few studies, and for this, I'm going to go to some neurology okay (laughs) so um delayed gratification is related to the prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex is related like it's related to delayed gratification because it's the area that helps you with long-term thinking Mm -hmm. decision making problem solving and all that stuff and it's uh right here (laughs) <laughs> in front of your head <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't fully develop until you're about 25 so mm, so we're good <laughs> just <laughs> right about now but until like obviously people's brains develop at different uh, rates mm-hmm. but until your brain is fully developed your mindset is more so we're going to be focused on immediate um, goals mm-hmm. and not the long-term things. Like, so, you know, like when you mature, you have, you'd have more thoughts on owning a house or saving up money to buy a car mm-hmm. rather than, I don't know, buying something small or getting takeout all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the decision-making thing, I did a lot of stuff stupid stuff in high school a lot of stuff that i wouldn't do now did you (laughs) did you really (laughs) stupid maybe dangerous is though Mm. (laughs) (laughs) i thought it was invincible honestly i think every high school high schooler feels that way (laughs) i used to go drifting a lot in my car Mm -hmm. in the winter We weren't together very long while you had your car until you sold it and we got our new SUV, but you did do a little bit of drifting in there with me and I didn't like it. Did I? Yes. Just around like corners. Oh, yeah. Not like going to an empty parking lot and just drifting. Oh, no. But like, (laughs) even just you on the corners, I'm like... (laughs) Sometimes Julian still thinks he can drift in our SUV. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> but he takes the corners hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to drift. I'm just assuming the tires have good uh, traction. <laughs> so there are a couple different ways you can imp- improve your delayed gratification. And basically like your decision making. Mm-hmm. The first way that I know of is to stimulate neuroplasticity. Because you know that your brain isn't some static thing like you're smart or not smart kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can grow your brain. Yeah. So there's different ways you can do this. And some of the more common ways that people would do this is analytical thinking and decision making. 
So this is like math problems. Ew. We're <laughs> you hate math. Julian and I were doing a quiz thing the other day, and Julian asked me if I could learn, like wake up and just have a, three new skills. And one of the skills I said I would want to have is being really good at math. <clears throat> I was actually homeschooled. And love you so much, mom and dad, but I definitely blame being homeschooled on me having horrible math skills because I did not learn math properly from a young age. And then I went to school in middle school and just felt so overwhelmed and stressed out by it all the time. I had tutors and stuff, but it just felt like one of those things I was like, I can never catch up. I have too many knowledge gaps. (laughs) Math is stressful. Yeah. But you're in luck. You can also do word games. Oh, good. I like those. Mm -hmm. Memory games Mm. and puzzles. We do like the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get the better delayed gratification. And actually, now that I think of it, you can, uh, I don't know. It wasn't like I don't see them as much anymore. But there used to be all those apps. It's like, oh, become smarter if you use this app. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a $15 a month subscription. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Who has money to get that smart? Yeah. <laughs> capitalism. Dang capitalism, I tell you. So a really good way as well. I was uh, looking on the website masterclass, Mm -hmm. they said that cooking is a really good way. And the reason is because it stimulates so many of your senses. And we cook all the time. Mm -hmm. Stimulates so many of your senses and requires so many different elements because you have to do motor coordination, math problems, multitasking, and all that. So... That's true. There are math problems involved in cooking, but I usually just yell at Julian for the answer. (laughs) Or they're already, that's why they make multiple sizes of measuring cups. Yeah, but sometimes if you're like fiddling around with halving or quartering a recipe, and you have to do that math yourself. Fair enough. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, this all works because it creates new neural pathways and strengthens the existing pathways. And basically the way I understand is the more pathways you have, the more connections your brain can make. Mm. So it's easier to do everything. That makes sense for sure. So two of the biggest benefits I see with increasing your delayed gratification are one, Less impulsive decisions, like seeing things you want and not actually purchasing them. Mm-hmm. So um, it makes me think of when I was younger, my mom would always take us window shopping. Uh, Do you ever do that? Go Carol. <laughs> it's like, you can look at what you want, but you can't get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get it. I like it. And what's the second thing? Long-term planning. Uh, Okay. I feel like we do both of those things. We window shop a lot because there's a lot of stuff we want, but the bank digits just don't add up for getting (laughs) it. So (laughs) it's not happening. (laughs) So we're really good window shoppers. And we definitely are avid long-term planners. Like I think we have probably 10 different life plans figured out and Mm -hmm. spent a crazy amount of time putting like immense detail and thought into each one of them. Hey, I like it. It's a good idea. Making plans is like one of the best ways to delay gratification. Mm -hmm. Every time one of my like friends or family asks me what Julian and I are planning to do over the next five years or so, or once I finish my PhD and once he finishes his schooling, I always give them different answers because we're just constantly coming up with different places we want to move to, different places we want to live, different schools, ideal places we'd want to work. <laughs> so it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It is exciting. 
plowing a life together. <laughs> um, yeah, and we do that list before bed too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we're gonna expose ourselves here. That is actually a good idea. We should totally. You can explain it, babe. Yeah, so we have a list of the things we want to do the next day. We kind of have it split up. There's some things that we want to do every day. Like on my list, I have uh, reading, playing guitar, and then we both have drinking water. Um, yeah, so we'll actually, we'll put a screenshot of the list in the video for people who are watching us on YouTube. And then you can kind of understand what we have going on. But we have like a Julian section, a Gianna section, and then they're broken down into... Um, morning and afternoon and then at the bottom we have a section for things we want to do collectively yeah well and one it makes us like accountable the next day just because mm -hmm. you feel guilty of not doing your list <laughs> kind of guilty but it's also just so nice that when we're like sitting there working we can look at it and be like okay this is what I need to do next and so we every night we sit down and we check off what we did for that day on our list. And then we write out and f or we fill in the list for the next day with what we want to do. So, yeah, very good accountability thing. It does. I, it definitely helps me because I would procrastinate <clears throat> a ton on getting those things done. Well, and there's nothing worse than getting to the end of the day and then realizing Oh my gosh, I got completely distracted by so many things and I forgot that I had so many things I needed to get done today or wanted to get done. And so just having that there visually helps a lot. And we still, we each have our own separate calendars that we do, like our monthly calendars. And we fill those out at the start of every month together with our, you know, erasable markers. But we just like doing this every night together. So if anyone is interested... Um, you can let me know and I'd be happy to share our document with you and you could fill it in with your own names or something. <laughs> like I was saying at the start there, actually writing it down, like with the studying thing, um, knowing what you have to do and writing it down makes it a more, um, like it's not in your head. You have to write it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And then when you look at that, instead of be like, oh, I can just go hang out with my friends and stuff, you actually see the list in front mm -hmm. of you. And it also reminds you too. Because sometimes you're like, it's easy to go out and avoid doing what you want. So. Well, it, it does this both ways, right? So in the one experiment, they put the toys or the, um, I don't remember if we talked about this one, but there's an experiment with toys. And in this one experiment, they put the toys in front of the kids. Um, so the kids could see the toys, but they weren't allowed to play with the toys. But obviously seeing the toys made them want to play with the toys more. And so this is the same thing in the sense that by being able to see what you have to do, you can't avoid it. So these kids weren't able to avoid the toys. And here you kind of can't really avoid the task you have to do. So making it visual in this sense actually helps. So it's like you should hide all of the <laughs> things that are going to distract you and that maybe aren't the best habits, but then bring to the forefront all of the really healthy habits you can build and things you want to focus your time and energy on. Yeah, and even like, I don't know, I keep going back to like school stuff, but like studying elsewhere, like don't study where you like, I mean, obviously you can and do it all the time, but like, if in an ideal world, I could study in a library because I would have way less distractions. I'll put the phone on, do not disturb, <laughs> all these things because it's crazy how much more you can get done when you don't have your phone beside you. Because mm -hmm. I'll be like, sometimes I'll study for an hour, <laughs> but I probably only did like 20 minutes of studying because I'd check my phone every, reply to a text or something every five minutes well that's when you get into that like delayed discounting right where you trick yourself and that's why i didn't think the delayed discounting was going to be more beneficial than the delayed gratification because with delayed discounting you're kind of tricking your mind into doing something beneficial so then you get a reward 
but I don't think you're actually focusing as much on the beneficial thing you're doing. It's like, I don't know if people have seen this before, but <laughs> there used to be, or maybe still are, things on like Facebook where they'd be like studying hack and they'd have your textbook and then every like chapter a few pages they'd have like a chocolate bar shoved in there and so that's totally the idea of delayed discounting and I don't think that would help me with studying at all no because then I'd just be focusing on like getting to that chocolate bar I wouldn't be like retaining what I'm reading no actually this is going to be a completely not other episode, but the episode's going to be talking about extrinsic, 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 intrinsic rewards and giving yourself rewards actually possibly diminishes your incentive to do things. So hmm, that's really interesting. I'll look forward to that episode. Yeah, I'm excited to do that one. <laughs> I've already wrote like five or six episodes yeah because i've been sick for so long um julian's just been working like a madman writing out a whole bunch of episodes so we'll just be able to get them all filmed up and recorded i am getting better at writing them too making them flow a little they like flow a little better in my mind starting from the bottom <laughs> that being said if you have any topics that you would like us to cover make sure you let us know over dm or email. Yeah, absolutely. And make sure that if you are listening to the podcast and you enjoy it, please leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on. It will really help our podcast to try and get a little bit of traction. Um, and of course, we have all of our social medias. So again, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, maybe TikTok one day, but not so sure about that one yet. Um, so... Yeah, we're really excited to be working on this podcast together and just creating this informal but fun space to chat about these topics. And we would love to hear any feedback from people. Yes. Constructive feedback. No, rude feedback. <laughs> Give me your hate comments. I want them all. This podcast sucks. Oh my gosh, Julian and Gianna, they're such posers. <laughs> Which like... Just to clarify, in case this is something people think, like, we know we're not experts on anything. Like, this is just fun for us, you know? We live in a city where we, like, know nobody, and we're in COVID and lockdown, and so this is the funnest possible thing we could be doing, and we're looking forward to doing it long-term. Yeah, I'm excited. We have, like, 60 episode ideas already, so. Yeah, we got a year's worth of <laughs> so we'll be posting every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So make sure you hit subscribe, follow, or set that auto download so you don't miss an episode. Absolutely. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs>